and welcome to Utah Homes and Garden. I'm your host, Miriam Claire Kearns, and in the time you spend with us, we hope to show you the very best that Utah has to offer for the comforts of your home. We're here today at Kimball Distributing with Walter Nasi for Cucina Toscana here in Salt Lake City. We're going to be making some marvelous festive dishes that he has created for us uh, with his whole idea of cooking around the family in the kitchen with wonderful fresh ingredients. This particular kitchen is part of their Viking Designer Series. It's available in five different colors and it's an absolute joy to work in to have everything here at your fingertips. Walter Nasi's presence and energy in Cucina Toscana is unmistakable. As a creative inspiration behind this Tuscan trattoria, he has created a restaurant worthy of his decades as a restaurateur and his international reputation. Walter makes each and every patron feel like family. The restaurant takes pride in its proven ability to serve authentic Tuscan fare in a visually dramatic atmosphere with the freshest of ingredients at the highest levels of service and quality. The menu, while diverse, remains simple and absolutely true to its Tuscan heritage. Cucina Toscana has a New York feel and recalls the heydays of the mining era in the early 1900s when Salt Lake City boasted some of the finest restaurants in the country. It is less a restaurant, more a dining experience. She has this chair. He loves that chair. Oh, she loves that chair. It's a stickly. It was my dad's. It was her mom's and uh... He wanted a matching piece. One piece, I said? So we go to the showroom. She went nuts. He went crazy with all the different styles. So I pointed out. And I pointed out. Great value. How affordable. So, anyway, we ended up with more than one piece. Like I said, but does he? She listen. Do you listen? Do you listen? Do you listen? Do you listen? I thought it was your mom's chair. You know it was my dad's chair. Today we are with Walter Nasi, concept creator at Cucina Toscana, who is going to make a very simple meal for us for a very festive meal for the holidays, uh, a meal that can be done with the family sitting around the kitchen, and uh, in 45 minutes, is that correct, Walter? Yes, it is, it's not more than 45, yes, perfect. And so tell us from start to finish what we're going to be making. We are going to make a salad, a beef salad with the chestnuts related to the festivities, chestnuts, black truffle and portobello. That sounds wonderful. Uh, the sauce is, is, uh, is the sauce, uh, the sauce 
The sauces will be just oil and the same place. What is that? Oil, lemon, and garlic. That sounds marvelous. <laughs> Let's get going. Let's get going. Let's go. Bye, la brava. <laughs> Let's start with the chestnuts. These are caramelizing in a pot, I take it. And tell me what is in that pot with the chestnuts. Just caramelized with, uh, you see, vanilla, yes. vanilla, uh -huh. vanilla, fresh vanilla. This is the raise, a vino dolce, Madeira, Madeira, people you know better Madeira, and the, and the, the incredible saffron. And so just a pinch of saffron. A pinch of a saffron. And we let this cook for and, how long? Uh, 20 minutes. The important is it to prepare this before, maybe an hour before, to have vino dolce, which is a Madeira, Zafferano, a touch of water, eh? only one leaf of sage. You see that? Why is it master? It's about only one. And a touch of uh, a touch of the sugar. Now we add this one. The skin of a lemon. The skin of a lemon is important always, always to give this uh, agrumato. This agrumato. Agrumato is a, is a, a, a the the perfume of the lemon. Smell, right? The essence. Smell, smell, the essence. Smell, right? Yeah, that's right? the secret that I always believe. The, the saffron and lemon. Yes. Uh, first, the two color, they get to the smell. Come here, just come here. So, 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 you, you feel the, this proportion of saffron and lemon together. Yes. So just a zest of one lemon, and this is something that we can prepare maybe before the children get home. And the ingredients here are so simple. Not Look at the ingredients. Lot. No cannot do that. Everybody can do that. Then when you are here in front of the kitchen, that you see the spinach, boom, you dream something. And the day after you perfect it. Then the child eat it. Then he ask you. Then we are together. Then we have a beautiful tablecloth. Then we eat, we talk, we socialize. There is nothing more beautiful than that. It's my mission to transmit the passion of the food, but not just eating. It's not about it, it's a socialize at that table. Now, Walter, for our beef salad, what kind of cut of meat do we start with? This one, uh, this one, entricot. This entricot is the New York Street, aged. Uh, uh, New York Street. Well, right? you need to go to the butcher and get a slightly thicker, obviously thicker than just a regular steak. Yeah, we do that in the restaurant. Uh -huh. and we cut specifically, do you see, three fingers. Three and fingers. this is uh, around 14 fingers, uh, let's say 16 ounces with everything. Show me okay. how you cut uh, the meat. No, guarda che lavoro. No, here. This is the name of this way, bastoncini. Bastoncini, bastoncini is a, a, a stick. Stick, eh? bastoncini, stick. Ecco, like that, look. Eh? In three parts. You see? Bello. Look at it here. You understand? Now the garlic. The Do garlic, the see? garlic. This is the secret that is in garlic. Just have this, the pasta, this is enough. And so garlic. you just wipe the uh, say, crushed garlic say, on the... Say, 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 on, on, on the steak. Well, what would life be without garlic? What? Now you are doing the other operation. And we have fresh sage. Uh, yes, in order for you to, to this, is a, this is important. Mm, uh, I say good. like that. And so you break, just break say, the stalk and say, rub that on exactly. the sage. Exactly. So you're just getting the essence of the flavors say, of the garlic say, and the sage. At this point, at this point, never to put salt before. Do you know the reason? The salt is opening, uh, is opening the pearl. Here the meat is prepared like that. Now, do you see? Ecco, this is the street, the famous street. So you just slice the meat Just thinly. slice the thin, just like that. Now, what I can really smell the same. Eh, do you That says the lemon. And then the, the, the meat needs to be relaxed. Pare, palpare. Palpare, palpare. And you just mix the uh, meat together. Yes. So the, the essence of the sage and the garlic yeah. gets mixed in with the meat. In the meat, not putting salt and pepper, all the make sure that after you are going to take away all the garlic. 
all the garlic hey. in the sage. So next we are going to we are going to cook the spinach. We prepare all the three bases of the plate: spinach, portobello, and meat. This is the pan for the for the portobello. Okay. okay. Portobello. All right. Now that's all cleaned up, so that's Bam. ready to go. Bello, sezionato, sezione. This is the section. Now we put the portobello here. Now you take the knife and you take away all the, the gambo, the gambo, the gambo. The stock. The stock. Ecco. Vale, vale. Now you take the oil, 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 salute del mondo, oil, the, the health of the world. Da, da. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Don't take away the skin now of the garlic. You take three pieces of the garlic. One, two, with the skin and everything. And three, because in the skin there is also the oil. So you add the garlic with the skin on it to the oil to flavor. See. And you just the oh, just the like whole. that. Just like that. Three. And you, ah, and you said uh, we also add sage. Do you add this yes. point? Yes. Uh, just a, a a a mazzetto of sage. Just like that. Boom. See, see. Two or three of them. Excellent. Wow. And this just flavors the oil. And this is the flavor there. Well, it's arriving. It's arriving. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah. All, so you just sprinkle the salt just on see. the sage and no, dry it. Smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Delicious. And you just leave that on there just for a few moments. A few moments moment until you feel until you feel that the, the mix of uh, of uh, the garlic and sage are together. And you leave the garlic and the sage in the pan? Yes, yes. yes. And you watch always. When you see that what the, when the uh, garlic is it take this amber, this amber, come on, you take this away. So we put the mushrooms just in the pan? Like this. Yes. Wow, the smells. And then we cover them? Yes, then you can cover them. Thank you, thank you. Oh, no, okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Wow, I like that. Perfect. Okay. At this point we wait, this boy we are all under control. Uh, eh? Is it now caramelized? The, the water come out of the mushroom and the heat, like you dry this immediately and it's to add this chestnuts right. to do this cook the spinach. So everything is in line. In the same liquid, you saute this liquid. Okay, so the mushrooms are now caramelized, yes? Uh -huh. Okay, do you see? Yes, and then we add the chestnuts. Uh, here, around here. So, we do now take some of the dark water there and we do this glassare, the glassare. In the pastry shop, this is salt is very important because it's, a, it's a, you know, the, the job of the salt quantifies the intensity of the flavor. And you just sprinkle yeah. the salt on yeah. top of the salt. I'll just not go to do it. Put everything here now, everything. Yes. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to drizzle on top of no, the mushrooms no, no, just around the whole thing. No, 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 so here we have the uh, garlic that is flavored is with the oil. Yeah, understand. This is spinach. It's alive. It's, I can smell it. Uh, do you? Yes. Is it there? Okay. Yes. Look, look, just like. And then the spinach will tell you exactly what to do. Go, go. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, like that. And let it, this to be, to be, or not to be. <laughs> not to be. <laughs> Now take some, take this salt, the, the operation salt. Operation salt. And operation salt is one pinch. One, the chestnuts out here. Yes. Okay. We put some water and we again do uh, re, uh, re, we revitalize the sauce. Okay. okay. And uh, um, we put the So we cook it all in the same pan. All in the same pan. And give a little uh, touch here. Take some water. Do you see? Oh, not too much. Otherwise, otherwise, bagnare. Eh, that's enough. This is the prodotto. Oh, that's huh? awesome. Wonderful. Uh, patient. The secret in the kitchen is a, is a, is a patient. 
patients. No, the water is coming out of the spinach. Yes. And it's mixed with the oil. Do you need the plates? Smell, smell, smell here. Now, do you see this is flour? This is flour. But to have this like that, sprinkling, like, like uh, a snow. I mean, uh, Light dusting of ah, snow. Now, do I turn the spinach Yes, now? go ahead. Just like that now. Just like that. That's what I'm doing. Like you can smell the lemon coming do out. You? Do you? Do yes. you? Here, I am ready. It's delicious. It, it, uh, this is the, the ready, okay? This is the all under under the Toscan sun. Ready. So we remove all of this from the... See, from the see, see. Uh, they are ready now. Here. Ta. Ta. Olio. Olio. Olio minerale. Servincio Sansovino. Cipolla nazionale. No, ma we do that because we don't want to wash all the one pan. <laughs> but it was not true. They were reusing all the cakes. So they weren't being lazy, they were being creative. <laughs> it was creation. Just a half bunch at a time. So be careful. Pa. That's it. Like, uh, that's it. It's a beautiful lemon. color. Of the lemon. Prepare the lemon. Because uh, that job is a spoon. And the meat on top. Look at this. This is like that. Yeah, just a fresh, not to just like that now. What would be that to do this like that? Now take this is spinach. Spinach they are alive. Yeah, you know the not too much, right? You understand? The mushroom on top? And this is the things, Marina. Buon appetito, ragazzi. Yes, this is something that is not joking. Looks magnificent. Just the nuts in the open fire. And the sugar. The sugar. Huh? Mm. That is delicious. Absolutely delicious. Do you? Thank you so much. What a festive, festive meal, and it is not difficult to put together. Ah, is it? And you look like a hero when you have finished. Ah, look at this. There you go. It's absolutely okay. delicious. Bueno. of the Wasatch Mountains in Salt Lake City, Cactus and Tropicals was founded almost 30 years ago. It has grown to become the local standard for creativity, beauty, and value for indoor and outdoor plants, accessories, gifts, and plant maintenance. In 2002, it was purchased by Scott and Karen Pines, who were committed to continuing the original concept and vision. Winding paths will lead you through ficus jungles, palms, cactus gardens, bonsai, and hundreds of orchids. The air is full of the sound of bubbling fountains and the scent of a thousand varieties of flowering plants and herbs. You will see gifts from around the world, as well as the work of local artisans.
In the spring and summer, wander through beautiful gardens featuring perennials, annuals, drought-tolerant and native plants of every kind. In the winter, it's thousands of amaryllis, paper whites, and other seasonal plants. If you're looking for inspiration, creativity, beautiful plants and gifts, it's always a pleasure to stop by Cactus and Tropicals. There are thousands of homeless pets living in Utah. None of them know how to ask you for help. All of them could use a hand. Five dollars from every family could save them. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I knew this would happen the minute I finished designing this kitchen. That's why I chose Silestone, a cleaner, safer countertop with built-in antimicrobial protection. Silestone works for your design sense and your family. Let's eat. Mmm, Silestone Quartz, a cleaner, safer countertop. Look okay. Today we're at Cactus and Tropicals and we're going to be talking with Bill Howe, the creative director, about how to pick an amaryllis bulb and stage it for the holidays. So Bill, we have some beautiful uh, amaryllis examples here and a very, very large bulb. Tell us a little bit about this bulb. Well, you can tell from the diameter of the larger the bulb, the more chances of bigger or more flower stalks. Okay. Usually you get more incredible blooms with the bigger bulbs too. Um, so out of a bulb this size, how many stalks would you get? Usually on, the, on average, uh, two, most likely you'll get three. A lot of these big ones are shooting out three, four. I've had them up to four or five. And you can stocks. get anywhere from two to four. Two to four to five blooms on five. each stock too. Right. And if you watch it, um, the as you see them coming out, the further um, distance apart the blooms are, the longer they'll stay in bloom. Okay. You can have them up to three and a half weeks, four weeks in bloom. That's marvelous. So how long does it take to, for a plant to get to this point? Usually with a heat mat, if you've got a, a nice warm sunny spot or whatever, probably six to eight weeks on, on average. In a cold cooler house, sometimes up to ten weeks to get them to bloom. So you can't go and buy one of these and expect two weeks later for Christmas for it to bloom? Mm, definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, <laughs> all right. Good. So tell us how you um, support a plant like this. Yeah, usually when they get as tall as this, I've had them actually just flop right out of a pot because the root systems are tend to be not fully established on them at this point. They're so eager to be blooming. So when they get to this point, you can... Uh, stake them up with bamboo, um, dogwood, we've even done wire armatures for them, um, curly willow. You just want to have something in there so when the flowers finally start opening up, it doesn't get top heavy and fall out of the pot. So show us how you would uh, use something uh, festive for the holidays to prop up one of these plants. Okay, usually we, uh, we stage them in, well they're grown in these plastic pots so the biggest thing you want to do is disguise this pot. So you can put them in anything from a basket to a ceramic pot, um, stage them in there, mm -hmm. stick them in. And then what we normally do is secure them in with uh, like a mood moss. 
so now that we have the moss in the pot, uh, first of all, is there anything that you need to do with the moss before you put it in the pot? Certain mosses will turn brown faster if they're wet. Oh, okay. Or whatever. But basically, this mood moss, where it stays really green and fluffy, clear through the holiday. All right. Now that we have the steak in there securely, um, we need to tie it off. Is that correct? Right. Because when they when they start opening in their blooms, they tend to get top heavy and they'll flop out of the pot. So this year what we've been doing is securing them with some uh, ribbon and you don't want to tie them off really tight. This is basically just to keep it upright. The stick is doing the supporting and you can do it with raffia, with all kinds of ribbon and... Now we're doing this for the holidays but um, you had said earlier that uh, you're getting amaryllis in that's, that can bloom toward Valentine's Day. Yeah. Really popular colors this time of year, Christmas, are the really dark reds and the whites. But we're blooming pinks and there's striped orange, um, pale peach. So what else could you add to make this a little more festive for the holidays? Well, depending on the season, what we, what we do is there's different colored mosses that you can put on there. Um, you could do Which are beautiful colors. You could do uh, Christmas ornaments, um, cut greens. This happens to be juniper with some great berries. Depends on what you want to do. If you're having a silver theme, you could do Christmas bulbs. So these are some wonderful ideas. So you can do this at home or come into Cactus and Tropicals and they will create your own custom amaryllis for you. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again to bring you more exciting ideas of the very best that Utah has to offer. See you next time.